Now, I said I'd be back for a spoiler review of Captain America The Winter Soldier. So, in case for some reason, based on my original review, you haven't already seen this movie, then stop this video, go check it out in theaters, you're gonna love it, and then come back and watch this. Now, for people who have seen this movie already, let's get into the nitty gritty, the juicy details on what happened in The Winter Soldier. Now, First, the beginning, when you see Captain America, he's working for S.H.I.E.L.D., he's doing his missions, and I love seeing the strength, the ability, just how powerful this guy is compared to just a regular person. You almost forget that this is Steve Rogers. He isn't normal. He isn't just a soldier. He's that much more. When you see him hand-to-hand -hand fighting and just like one kick, one punch, one hit with his shield, people go flying off that boat or flying into the door and it's just like, wow, very cool. I loved all of that. Also, his relationship with Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, very funny, the two of them. They're not a romantic couple, thank God. Yeah, you have a moment where they kiss, but that was played up for comedy for the most part. I mean, I like how their relationship is like a friendship how Black Widow is actually constantly trying to get him set up with a different woman, trying to get him back into the world in that way. And there's always these moments of her just continuous to bring it back up. And every time that happened, that was funny. And like I said, them having to hide out from S.H.I.E.L.D. or the world in that moment where they kiss, I thought stuff like that was used up well. Speaking of S.H.I.E.L.D. though, Nick Fury being portrayed by S.H.I.E.L.D., and that, that car chase scene that he has, that was, that was surprising. I wasn't expecting the whole betrayal of S.H.I.E.L.D. I figured, I mean, okay, Robert Redford, that was completely obvious that he was the guy behind it. So yeah, in that sense, I wasn't surprised by that reveal at all. Maybe that also had something to do with the promotion because I swear Marvel tweeted a picture of Robert Redford before the movie came out, and it said, hashtag don't trust. Hmm, I wonder what that means. But either way, I still liked Robert Redford's character and the way how that deceit came about. But it looking like Nick Fury died, I, I wasn't really expecting that. I had my suspicions from the trailer that maybe something happened to him. But I figured he was going to fake it, and ultimately, he did fake it, but when you see him literally flatline, and it looks like they, they have his dead body with a sheet over it, and you're like, fuck, he's really dead. And I was surprised. I, I didn't know what more to think about that. And then when we do eventually find out that he faked his death, I think I was more surprised that we found out about it so quick. It was only maybe an hour after that that we found out he was still alive. I thought maybe we wouldn't find out until the next Avengers movie or maybe an after credit scene. But no, they gave it to us. He was still back involved in the end of the movie. And I love Samuel Jackson. Now, Hydra being inside S.H.I.E.L.D., them being the S.H.I.E.L.D. members that were doing all this stuff, I was not expecting that. Maybe I suspected some S.H.I.E.L.D. members being shady, but HYDRA being involved? Didn't see that coming. I love the constant references to the first film with Red Skull and even how that scientist had put his brain into that computer and they found that little secret hideout. All of that was fascinating and awesome and it made HYDRA that much more of a threat than they were in the first Avenger movie. I really enjoyed that aspect. I enjoyed finding out which S.H.I.E.L.D. members or just which people in government and whatnot in the world were HYDRA members. Gary Shandling, like, I didn't expect that. But HYDRA was pretty, pretty big. I was wondering if Red Skull would show up. He didn't, and I would be okay with him never showing up. If he did come back, okay, cool. But I think HYDRA as an organization can't continue on without Red Skull. And I'm curious to see where else they go with it because Hydra is still out there. And by the end of the movie, S.H.I.E.L.D. is done. It's gone. 
you see Marie Hill going to work at Stark Industries. You see uh, Sharon Carter going to work for the CIA. Nick Fury goes into hiding. S.H.I.E.L.D. is done. How the hell is that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show going to continue? It's called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know they have these, these tie-in episodes that are, that are happening, but still, the show is going to have to end or drastically change somehow. My friend that I saw this with, even he said that this plot felt big enough for an Avengers movie. And I completely agree with that. I love this plot and just the political backstabbing going on. I loved it. The emotional moment that I mentioned in my review, but I stayed away from names, I was talking about Steve Rogers visiting Peggy. Peggy Carter, who was his love interest in the first Avengers. Now she's like 95 years old or so. And that was really emotional to see because those were two characters that I wanted to see end up together. I loved their chemistry. I, you know, it, it was one sad aspect to that first film that they never got to be together. I just assumed that all this time later maybe Peggy had died, but the fact that she was still alive, as old as she was, when Steve went to go visit her, she didn't even recognize him at first, and she's talking to him like he's just some visitor, and then she has a coughing fit, and then she realizes it's him. And, and she kind of starts to freak out, like, you came back, and she's in the, it's like, she's so out of it by now. It's, it's so sad. It's so sad to see that that's what happened with those characters. Speaking of Peggy Carter, we did get Sharon Carter. Now, they didn't say her by name, so who knows if she's related to Peggy, but the woman that was his sort of next door neighbor in that apartment. You find out she's an undercover S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, one of the good ones left. And she was looking after Steve Rogers. He kind of liked her, but of course, she was really working undercover. I liked her character. She wasn't in it a whole lot, but I liked that reveal of her being an agent. And I liked that she was at least one of the few good agents left. And I liked that they gave us an update on what happened to her post the S.H.I.E.L.D breaking up because maybe that makes me think that she'll come back in a third Captain America movie. And I'd like to see maybe something happen with her and Steve Rogers. How am I going this long without talking about the Winter Soldier? Because the Winter Soldier is my favorite part about this film just as a villain. Never mind the character stuff that comes in later, but just him as a villain. The stone cold assassin programmed almost Terminator-like, when you first see him with the mask, the goggles, and he looks like he kills Nick Fury, and the scene where Steve chases him out the building, he catches the shield. Yeah, we saw it in the trailers, but it looked that much more badass. And then the part where he looks like he's about to kill Black Widow. He has another fight with Steve Rogers. The mask gets ripped off. Steve, for the first time, sees that it's Bucky. And it's the first time that when he calls him Bucky that Sebastian Stan talks. Because I didn't know if he was going to talk in this movie. He talks and he makes a face and reaction of like, who's Bucky? And that's when he starts getting the flashes of memories. And I found that interesting not just because it, it dealt with the duality of him not really wanting to do this. That he's programmed and that it was Hydra that did this to him. But it, it let you know that it was possible to get him back from this evil dark side. Yeah, they wiped his memory that time. But the end of the movie where they fight again and the whole ship is collapsing and Steve refuses to fight him and says that you know me and that if you're going to kill me, then just kill me. I loved all of that because it showed just how much Bucky meant to Steve that he was willing to do all that, and of course Bucky saves him. And one of the after credits scene actually ends with Bucky going to that museum, or whatever it is, and he sees a picture of himself with his history. And this is where he's going to start to realize who he is. And I love that. I love that his character was so developed and progressed so much. I can't wait for a third Captain America movie. It's definitely happening, so it's not like I have to worry about if. It's going to happen. Now, I have to mention 
the actual, the main after credit scene that we care about. You get some of Hydra talking with the remaining members of Hydra, and they have Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. And I freaked out in the theater. I literally was like, holy shit. I was not expecting to see them this early. They're just just them being trapped in cages and Scarlet Witch levitating her objects and Quicksilver speed running all around trying to get out. That was a moment. Marvel knows and they do it best how to set up an after credit scene that gets you excited for the next movie. And boy, they looked great. I know we I know we have X-Men copywritten issues, but still that they feel like they look like they're gonna be the characters. And I love that. I more than excited for the Avengers 2. And again, I really enjoyed this film. I'd love to know, I'd love to hear your comments below. What did you think of Captain America the Winter Soldier? This is the time where we can talk, spoiler talk, about this movie. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Later!